dear tenderness at the heart of things, hold us close. Incline us to hold one another close. Our living plunges us from yesterday to tomorrow faster than we're ever ready for. We were kids on the playground just a few minutes ago, and now look at us, kids in aging skin. The story we become with every second seems as though someone is speed reading it. We hardly have time to bump against one another, let alone make real connections. We grab desperately for meaning in this haste we seem to be. Hold us close. Slow us down. Give us at least a sense of pause. Help us to see each day with grateful wonder as if it were the first page of the story. Help us to live each day in thoughtful fullness as if it were the last page of the story. Hold us, slow us, help us, but keep us going as long as we can. Maybe it's because this is the first Sunday of the summer of 2013 that I decided to uh, lighten up a little bit and, um, and talk about something fun. And so this is one of my favorite subjects, which is the subject of bliss. Does everybody know what bliss is. You have your own definition of bliss. That's what we're going to talk about. Pure pleasure, pure delight, pure harmony with the universe. And maybe that's it. The real subject is harmony with the universe. I believe that the definition of bliss and maybe the thing we call happiness is exactly centered on that idea. When I am in harmony with the universe, I will be happy. And as you know, there are people actually studying happiness nowadays in several of the universities across the country. They're saying, um, what is happiness? And how do we get there? And what do people do to try to make it happen in their own lives and they're not sure about that. In fact, some people say there is no such thing as happiness because there's just too much misery going on in the world. I think sometimes we ought to stop and think about happiness and about bliss and how in the world we can find that. How do we find that harmony? How to identify and recognize it when I'm swirling in that cosmic flow. So we go back to the beginning of my time here back in September, actually in August, when I began asking those mom questions. Uh, what are you doing with your life? What on earth are you doing with your life? Who do you think you are? And what will you think of next? All of those ideas, I think, move us toward a real workable definition of the word bliss. Here is my formula for what I'm proposing. Whatever it is that brings you bliss is the very thing you should be doing in your life and in your relationship with the world around you. That's the thing you should be doing. Howard Thurman, the great African-American minister down in San Francisco said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive. And then go and do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Have you been alive lately? 
in your life? Have you been thinking that you have a contribution to give to the world and that that contribution comes from something that turns you on in the process. Imagine that, that the, what the world needs is people who get turned on because of the service that they're going to give to the world. Imagine that, that's something that would go on a, on a refrigerator someplace, just to remind you. Our true bliss is what makes us come alive and we all remember Joseph Campbell's ideas about this that he said you should find out what your bliss is and then follow it go find it somewhere wherever it leads you you follow your bliss into worlds that perhaps you don't even know right now can you can you remember moments in your own life when you really came alive do you remember times that you were so turned on by something that you were doing that you realized that every part of your body and soul was genuinely engaged, genuinely energized, genuinely turned on? What were you doing then? What is so completely occupying you to turn you on in that way? Let's, let's hear what you have to say about that. Somebody tell me, about a time when you were totally engaged. Just tell me right now, somebody. Folk dancing. Folk dancing. You were totally engaged in that and you were blissful in that. Cool. Anybody else? Working in the yard, putting your hands down into Mother Earth itself and working with the Earth to make something beautiful happen. Okay? Yeah. That's very interesting and I, I think that you're getting close to what I'm trying to say with this, that what the world needs, what the world needs is someone who is engaged and who has come alive even as they are serving the world. And, and that's what it sounds like you were doing. Anybody else have an idea, Ron? Playing with a grandchild, truly. That is blissful. Larry? Teaching? Okay. All right. Getting, a, giving. <laughs> well, I, well, I'll tell you right now, getting one would be good too. Just put the put the uh, put the sun tan lotion on, you know, and and just do it. So, giving a massage on the beach. I, that that's uh, that's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. Who else has been blissful lately? Singing. singing. Okay. When's the last time you were blissful singing? A few minutes ago, okay. There's a river flowing in my soul. There's a river flowing in my mind. Okay, anybody else? Yeah. Creating art. Okay, I like that a lot. Uh, that's one of them that I put down on my list, that when I am truly engaged with creation of some kind, but particularly with the arts. And of course, in my case, I remember times when I was singing that I was truly, truly blissful, that something was creating and that was coming from deep, in, that river flowing deep inside my heart and in my mind. And creating art is that way. So when you're creating art, you're not frustrated? At times, At times. okay. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. 
the act of creation, of course, was originally done, according to the legends, by this fellow named God. And, and then later, God created human beings, and he said, or actually they said, the, well, let's make them in our image. And the image that we receive from the divine is that we are creators, just as the divine creator is a creator. And in fact, we are inseparable. That creation of the world still happens every time you create a new work of art, Marie. And every time you sing a song. And, and you know, it's, it's really a neat way of looking at that kind of thing. Why not do what you like to do? Why not do something that makes you feel good even as you are serving the world in whatever way? And I think singing a song, in my opinion, I'm serving the world. I'm making the world a little bit better place because there's a song out there. There's a song going out into the world. And that's true of everything that has been mentioned here this morning. So we put ourselves out there. We find what our bliss is and we move it. So as we are trying to find our bliss, how do you do that? How do you locate that bliss in your heart and in your mind and in your life? Anybody got a comment on that? How do you do that? Paying attention. Thich Nhat Hanh's idea of mindfulness, of, of really being mindful of what is happening in this moment, in this time. Yes, and I think that what happens is, at least in my case, in my experience, when I get closer and closer, as I close in on my true bliss in my life, I realize that there's something urgent about it. There's something that says, I have to do something with this. And after I've located it, I say, it's like a gift that has been given to me that comes from me and also to me. And that gift is here, and I must do something with it. There's an urgency to that. And if you, if, uh, if you were a minister, and some of you are ministers in various ways, you would know that that's what we sometimes call the calling. And that is the urgency of that gift that you have within you is what calls us into the world to deliver that gift to the world. And so... Uh, you've heard me talk about James Hillman's book, The Soul's Code, which says his acorn theory, which is inside the acorn, is a master blueprint for the future of that entity. And that that acorn is going to grow into a certain thing. And it will not grow into any other thing. And that is the gift, I think, that is within each of us and all of us. There's a river flowing in my soul and in my mind and in my heart and that river is flowing out into the world in a kind of calling. Um, uh, David White, the, the poet, some of you know him and you've heard me speak of his poetry before, uh, writes this, he said, what waits in the seed of you to grow and spread its branches against the future sky. I, I love that. I love that. What waits in the seed of you to grow and spread its branches against the future sky? That is your bliss, whatever that is. And Joseph Campbell was right when he said that we should follow this bliss and use it as our guide of where we want to go and what do we want to do. So, 
I, in the, as a minister, have heard this calling, and there's something inside of me which is urgently needed in the world. And that's what my ministry is. <clears throat> so, you, what is urgent inside of you that projects its future as branches into the sky. Here's a good rule for finding out this true voice. The kind of work you're called to do is the kind of work that you need to do, that you need to do most, and that the world most needs to have done. That's what your calling is and that your bliss is. So, the place you are called is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. The place where your deep gladness, your true bliss, and the world's deep hunger, the world's deep need, meet at that almighty point of the creation of the world. So I say to you this morning, go for it. Go do it. Find out what the bliss is and then urgently deliver it to the world who is urgently waiting for your gift to arrive. And to get us in the mood for that, let's sing our concluding hymn, Blue Boat Home. Let us rise and hold hands for the benediction. The earth lifts its glass to the sun and light, light is poured. A bird comes and sits on the crystal rim, and from my forest cave I hear singing. So I run to the edge of my existence and join my soul in love, and I lift my heart to the divine and grace is poured. An emerald bird rises from inside me and now sits upon the beloved's glass. I have left that dark cave forever. My body has blended with the divine. I lay my wing as a bridge to you so that you can join us singing. Yes.